In the top stories, Prime Minister Harris praises customs on performance in 2016. Speaker of the House defends decision to reject motion of no confidence and a call to cherish the elderly and their knowledge. We'll be right back with the details after this. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. I'm Jason Davis. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris has praised the work of the Customs and Excise Department over 2016. His commendation came during his address on Sunday morning to officially launch Customs Week 2017. The week is being held under the theme Data Analysis for Effector Border Management. And the Prime Minister outlined how data analysis has led to visible improvements at, ports, at points of entry. It was through careful analysis of customs data that customs management was able in December in 2011 to implement new passenger processing measures at our airports. This has since allowed for safe yet faster processing of nationals and visitors upon arrival. He also noted that the Customs Department has been highly ranked by the World Bank when it comes to, doing e to ease of doing business internationally. The World Bank in the December 2016 publication of its well-known doing business report testified to the reliability of the customs data generated by our Customs and Excise Department in the context of CARICOM and Latin America and the Caribbean in particular, St. Kitts and Nevis Customs and Excise Department was ranked first in CARICOM and for that they deserve a round of applause. The Prime Minister also applauded the Customs Department for being ranked seventh in the countries of Latin America and the Caribbean. The launch of Customs Week was held at the Co-Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception in Bastère, and it was followed by the launch of the new Customs website at a lunch at Government House. International Customs Day will be commemorated on Thursday, January 26. Speaker of the House of Assembly, the Honorable Michael Perkins, has stood by his decision on Friday to reject a motion of no confidence brought by Leader of the Opposition, the Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas. During an interview with Director General of the St. Kitts Nevis Information Service, Les Roy Williams, Speaker Perkins said upon reviewing the motion, he was left with one of two options. Did it, did it um, infringe any of the provisions of the standing yes. order? Did it, any, you know? Um, or was it in a form that I could simply make some simple amendments and put it on the other paper? So I set about studying the um, motion and I found there was so, so much serious infringements on the rules that I had no choice but to declare it at the end of the day out of order. He said the opposition's claims that the speaker was biased were specifically deemed out of order. To accuse the speaker of bias, it's, 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 it's out of order. What the opposition members should do is, is a very simple route they can take. In Parliament, there are, there are rulings made as we go along. Ruling speaker makes rulings as we go along. If at any time any particular ruling does not find favor with any opposition member, that opposition member, all he or she has to do is to ask for a review of the ruling, but they must do it by what we call a substantive motion. Speaker Perkins said through that process, the opposition can then build a case to address their grievances with the speaker. If the opposition can build a case of a series of errors on the part of the speaker through substantive motions, clearly the speaker then finds himself 
with, with questions hanging over his head. And those questions can, in my opinion, amount to the opposition making a case where, look, this speaker is not doing a good job. We have shown that he is heard. We have shown that he is biased. Speaker of the House of Assembly, the Honorable Michael Perkins. Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris says while it is important to highlight the specific role young people play in the future development of the Twin Island Federation, the contribution of the elderly must never be forgotten. He was at the time speaking at the 105th birthday celebration of Celian Martin Powell on Thursday in Nevis. Many times when we speak about our country and its development, we speak about young people and important as they are, as the largest subsector of our population, and at times we forget the contribution of those who went before. And so today we honor the service of all our senior citizens. The Prime Minister charged the historians and others in St. Kitts and Nevis to capture in writing the wealth of knowledge and history these seniors possess that can be passed down to the next generation. The history and knowledge of what it meant in 1952 when for the first time ordinary people had a chance to vote. In the history of one life is knowledge about the Christina disaster. It's a knowledge about all the federal administrations and all the administrations and the island of Nevis. That is a lot of history to be residing one place. Celian Martin Powell, originally of Zion Village, Gingerland, was born on January 19, 1912. She's now a resident of the Flamboyant Nursing Home. Coming up, we'll have another look at some of the stories from the past week. Stay tuned. Need a new stove, fridge, bed, or TV? Short on cash? Come to Courts and let's get it done! Trade in your old items for 15% off the purchase of a new one and get what you need now with Courts Ready Finance. So, let's get it done! Only at Courts, bringing value home. January 16, 2017 marked the second anniversary of the special sitting of National Assembly to address the changing of the electoral boundaries. In 2015, the former administration called an emergency sitting of Parliament to change the boundaries weeks before the upcoming federal elections. The sitting itself has been described as historic due to the nature and the reported speed at which the bill proceeded through Parliament. The then opposition contested the decision in court and filed an injunction to block the decision, eventually taking it to the Privy Council. The council rejected the change and the election proceeded on the old boundaries. The government has refuted allegations that the Honorable Ian Liburd has engaged in a conflict of interest with the formation of a local business. In the post-cabinet briefing issued on Monday, Director General of the St. Kitts Nevis Information Services, Les Roy Williams, said in the meeting on January 9, Cabinet said there is no evidence of any ethical misconduct. Cabinet received legal advice on the matter and recorded its disappointments that certain elements in the society were attempting to make an issue where there was none. Cabinet reaffirmed this commitment to the highest level of ethical conduct and behavior by members of the cabinet and noted that not one scintilla of evidence has been provided to indicate that any member of the cabinet had breached any ethical standard. He said the company is not active and therefore Minister Liburd has not done anything illegal. The cabinet was assured that the company is not licensed to conduct business. Neither has the company engaged in any business, and in particular business, which benefits from any contracts with the government. The cabinet is satisfied that Minister Liburd has done nothing illegal. Further and most importantly, 
Minister Leibert has no intention to activate the business in question. He said cabinet has cautioned that it is unhelpful for persons to engage in speculation and innuendo on a serious matter of good governance and took note of the fact of its commitment to the electorate to avoid the clear conflict of interest situation that, quote, bedeviled the former Dr. Douglas-led administration, end quote. Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Michael Perkins, has rejected a motion of no confidence brought by the opposition criticizing the Speaker's behavior. During Friday morning's National Assembly, the Speaker responded to claims that he gave preference to certain speakers and tried to block specific members of Parliament from speaking. During his ruling on the motion, Speaker Perkins was interrupted by members of the opposition and eventually asked opposition leader, the Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, to leave the House of Assembly. Dr. Douglas responded that he was already on the way out. Other members of the opposition left with Dr. Douglas. After the opposition's departure, the Speaker ruled that the motion brought by Douglas questioning the impartiality of the Speaker is quote-unquote out of order and his is closed. He ended by saying that any motion, once properly filed and in good order, will be heard in the House of Assembly. Minister of State responsible for health, the Honorable Wendy Phipps, says the newly launched oncology unit at the Joseph N. France General Hospital has already made an impact on locals fighting cancer. During Friday's sitting of National Assembly, Minister Phipps described the unit as a milestone of advanced health care delivery and noted that chemotherapy treatments are already underway. This Honorable House, that the first chemotherapy treatment was done on Monday, January 9th of 2017, for a duration of just over three hours. A second patient was also treated on January 13th, 2017, for a duration of three and a half hours. A third patient is currently receiving hormonal treatment this present month. The types of cancers being treated thus far are namely breast and colon, and all patients thus far have been females between the age range of 31 to 49 years old. She said the government is proud of this achievement, which brings relief to cancer patients in St. Kitts and Nevis. That government is proud of this accomplishment in reaching this milestone in the advanced health care delivery of the Federation. Just last month, I would have shared with this Honorable House some glaring statistics with regards to our children with non-communicable diseases of which cancer is one. We can proudly state now at this point that chemotherapy-based cancer treatments can now be safely, ably, and effectively delivered right here in St. Kitts and Nevis and that this new service brings with it a number of benefits. She also encouraged everyone to monitor his or her health, have regular checkups, and take part in regular screenings for cancer, especially pap smears and PSA tests, which detect possible prostate cancer. After the break, Brazil team Chapescoense back on the field since a fatal plane crash, and White House press secretary blasts the media over inauguration photos. Stay tuned. Need a new stove, fridge, bed, or TV? Short on cash? Come to Courts and let's get it done! Trade in your old items for 15% off the purchase of a new one and get what you need now with Courts Ready Finance. So, let's get it done! Only at Courts, bringing value home. On the regional scene, Brazilian football team Chapescoense played its first match since most of its players were killed in a, in a plane crash in November. The friendly game against one of Sao Paulo's top clubs was a chance to remember the dead and celebrate a remarkable recovery. Here's more. Emotions were raw as Chapecoense played their first match since most of their players were killed in a plane crash. Before kickoff, survivors and their relatives took to the pitch for a tearful ceremony. Goalkeeper Jackson Fulman was presented with the Copa Suda Americana. The Brazilian club had been traveling to the tournament's final when their plane crashed in Colombia. There was no minute of silence 
Instead, the friendly against Palmeiras stopped at the 71st minute to allow fans to sing the Vamos Chape chant in tribute to the players and staff. In November, the team's plane ran out of fuel, killing 71 people on board, many of them players, officials and reporters. Internationally, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer has blasted the media over what he called fake reporting of the Trump inauguration crowd. Here's more. The row over how many people attended Donald Trump's inauguration has escalated after new White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer rounded on journalists accusing them of fake reporting. The latest broadside came after his boss also accused the media of dishonesty. It follows the publication of photos appearing to show a marked difference in crowd numbers between the inauguration of Barack Obama and President Trump last week. Dismissing the images, Spicer refused to take any questions from journalists in his first formal press briefing. This was the largest audience to ever witness an inauguration, period, both in person and around the globe. These attempts to lessen the enthusiasm of the inauguration are shameful and wrong. On Saturday, more than 500,000 people marched in Washington, D.C. to highlight women's rights, which many fear are under threat from the new administration. Millions also demonstrated in other U.S. cities and around the world in so-called sister marches. Some 400,000 hit the streets of New York. In response, Donald Trump took to Twitter, highlighting the fact that there'd been a recent election. He said, why didn't these people vote? We'll be right back with a recap of the top stories. Stay tuned. Recapping the top stories, Prime Minister Harris praises customs on performance in 2016. Speaker of the House defends decision to reject motion of no confidence and a call to cherish the elderly and their knowledge. And that brings us to the end of the ZIZ Channel 5 newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jason Davis.